listening. And you are joining us once again for the Hero Hour. Let me check the volume. All right. Hey. Very good. Very good. And uh, we have Lorenzo, the Sleeve Stack, with us this evening. How you doing, my friend? I'm pretty good. How you doing, buddy? Not too bad. Not too bad. I was just telling him that I uh, just drove back up from Daytona, where I dropped my wife off for her little mini vacation for her birthday. Originally, she was supposed to go with her mother, but her mother isn't able to go, so she's down there all by herself. So she's at a hotel with the spa and the pool and the beach and, you know, all, nice. the, all the amenities. And and I had to come back here because I have a dog. Oh. Somebody, and somebody's got to take care of the dog. I thought I might have heard a dog in the background before he came on. Yeah, he's here somewhere. He's around somewhere. And uh, Avery's in the chat. I mean, the, he better go to bed because he's not feeling well. Is there told, Avery? Yeah, I told him to uh, get some rest. But, uh, all right. So we are, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, hey, Bethany, how's it going? Just fine. Let me, okay, there we go. Now you won't get it twice. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I have to tell you guys something. I do not know how to draw women anymore. Women are uh oh hard. I, I did three sketches yesterday trying to to lay out a just lay out a design for my uh, skunk girl drawing and um, just uh -huh. just none of them worked for me none of them worked for me they were all horrible so I gotta I gotta I gotta kind of reteach myself how to draw the ladies and granted it's not something I was really great with to begin with just ask Avery but I at least Are you now uh, dry, uh, drawing women the SJW Marvel way? <laughs> no, it was worse than that. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought maybe you looked like, uh, maybe the characters were looking like, um, oh, what is it, uh, Captain Marvel? Oh, guys, you want to, oh, never mind. I don't, I don't have it with me. I, I picked up the latest previews, and I was just flipping through it, and... Um, on the flip side of the previews, it has toys and statues and all the stuff that's not comics. And they had a series, like a double-page spread, of all these different um, statues from Avengers Endgame. And they all looked pretty cool. They all look, they all look good. Like Cap was was uh, taking a pose, and and then Iron Man was doing a blast, and Hulk was like holding up something big. And they all looked fantastic. And then you flip the page, and there's Captain Marvel. And she's like running down a street scene, and that's it. I mean, there's no, there's nothing dynamic about it. It's just, it's almost like she's just walking or running down the street. I mean, it was that boring. And I'm like, this, I don't know who's gonna buy that, you know? Where all the others were dynamic and hero poses, and this one was just really bad. So, well, needless to say, we're gonna draw some yeah. Avengers tonight. I do. I'm just picturing it just. Yeah, it does just doesn't fit in. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if I get a, if I get a, if I get a break a minute to take a break, I'll go grab the previews and show it to you because it looked really bad. Yeah, because I'm just thinking it's a one character just doesn't fit in. Uh, and they and Marvel really uh, they they uh, they went through and uh, people had complained about their characters and they went through their comic books and they got rid of some of the ones that weren't sell some of the ones that weren't selling. They got rid of like yeah. they brought back the Hulk and people really like. A lot of people really like uh, the Immortal Hulk. I thought it got a bit formulaic, but I thought also think it's got some nice horror elements. Now like, I haven't I haven't read any of the Immortal Hulk mainly because Al Ewing blocked me, and I have no idea why. Yeah, he. he I think it, I think it's I think it's be, either. I think it's because I'm such an evil person, you know. I think he's got a he's probably got a blacklist. <laughs> uh, I think that's what uh, Diversity in Comics said. Yeah, well, most likely, most likely. But I like bringing which up the are, uh, Well, I don't even know what his show's called anymore with your boy, Zach. Uh, comics Matter. Oh, Comics yeah. Matter. Oh. Yep. Well, I'm going to draw an Avengers character. I just don't know who I'm going to draw tonight. So, Slee Stack, I leave it to you. Give me an idea who I should draw. No, from what? From Avengers Endgame. Oh, I have no idea. I haven't even watched that. <laughs> Well, guess what? I think we're drawing the Hulk then, because I'm in the mood to draw the Hulk. Let me get some images real quick. You should check out the Immortal Hulk and see if you like the new Hulk. Well, but if, if you have this idea of the old Hulk, I can understand. 
I always like drawing Mad Hulk, you know? He's always better as the Mad Hulk with, you know, the, the teeth and the... Don't you want to draw NPR Hulk? As uh, Zach calls him? <laughs> well, yeah, that's 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 very much what he's like. Yeah, he's got this, uh, at the end of at the end of every single story, he has to give some sort of lecture. At least oh, when is, I was reading it. Oh, is that from the Immortal Hulk? Yeah, he goes, and before oh. Hulk smashes, he gives some long... Uh, lecture about why, why why they did the wrong thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know what and, else uh, I was thinking. You know what else I was thinking about doing. Very um, articulate now. So so at the uh, at the uh, flea market the other day, I found and I took with me uh, a box of blank sketch cover comics that I had, and I made Avery go through it and pull out some that he was interested in, and I cannot find the one I was going to draw on. And it was a rocket rocket raccoon number one. Where the heck is that thing? Oh, not only am I late, I'm disorganized. Nothing is where it should be. I mean, yeah, I got Bethany white box. Hey, Bethany. I don't know if I said hello to you. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Um, uh, cross-eyed, trying to do this. I always enjoy your artwork. Yeah, See, this is from Detective Dead. He uh, uh, Critias had this up. Uh, from uh, his penciler and so thought I'd attempt it inking, which is really bad. <laughs> well, it's only... cool to it's cool to watch. The only way you get better at it is to do it. Yeah. You know, I know people say that all the time, but it's true. I don't even know if if he has you uh, white boxed. No, I think I have it on roaming right now. So anybody talking gets up okay. there, but yeah. No, there are so many details in that. Let me see if... Yeah, see, here's... I don't think you can see the uh, the pencil work. I just printed it out on 8.5 by 11, and it is so detailed. Yeah, the guy who did... It just looks blank to me when I'm looking right now. Yeah, because it's... Yeah. So, I put this back on. Put the tape back on. And yeah, I can just keep working. So, I'm just tracing over the top. But... You know, trying to get some of the details I can't see because my light box is, it's, they're just so small. Well, I'm assuming whoever did this is probably what doing, was it comic book size when you're inking and coloring is what, 11 by 17? That's the standard size, 11 by 17. And then what, you just scan it in and then change it to whatever you need? Yep. Okay. Pretty so much. If, if this was 11 by 17, it would be easier to draw. Right now it's trying to get faces and, you know, all these little tiny lines. It's, but... Critius liked it, and that's all that matters. Very cool, very cool. Now, what yes. kind of pe what kind of pen are you using there? Oh, uh, this is a point one Copic Mark multi liner. Oh, okay. Very good, very good. Yeah, but trying to get tires and spokes and shrapnel and and he's like cross hatched everything. <laughs> I guess that's how people get better, though, is by. Trial and error. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's how yeah, it's just cool. just doing this. Like I said, I you know, here with pencil and or I you know my ink and you know see what I can do. Make a big mess, but it's that's fun. It's do you of... usually mainly pencil things? What? Do you usually mainly pencil things, or do you ink as well? Typically. Uh, I'm a horrible drawer. Only because I don't do it very much, so I'd rather just like ink, just trace it over something else. Oh. Okay, yeah, you you've been on here inking before, then I. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of blanking out this evening. No, that's okay. Well, the more you do it, the better you get. Trust me. Yeah, that's that's how it works. Hey, Eagle Forty Three, how's it going, man? Okay, so I found this uh, copy of Rocket Raccoon. Uh. Let me guess. Nobody can see my camera right now. I well, it's yeah, been... it's All right, let me see what. There happened. we go. All right, there we go. There we go. For some, I I turned on my my thing to record and I've got you a white box or whatever it's called. Oh, uh -huh. man. So so what I was saying is I had I have a box, a small box that's just filled with nothing but blank covered sketch uh, comic books. And uh, I pulled out a couple that I thought might be cool to, to actually draw on. I, I've been collecting them for, oh, for forever. And I rarely ever do anything with them. 
And I was telling Avery, it says, you know what, maybe now's the time to start drawing on them and maybe actually putting them out there and see if anybody wants them. And I came across this issue of Rocket Raccoon. This is from the uh, all new Marvel Now um, when uh, Scotty Young was doing it, where he did the uh, he was writing it and doing the art. So uh, I'm probably not going to do a Scotty Young version of Rocket Raccoon. I think he's a little. This is him here. I'm not a big. Eh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's definitely his style and so forth, but yeah, it looks like a unique style, but yeah. maybe not for everyone. Well, my thing is, is that this would probably have this came out about the time of the movies, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and I wonder how many people went to the store and picked it up because it's Rocket Raccoon, who they just saw in the movie, and then they look at this character and go, "This doesn't look anything like what I see on the on the screen," you know? Is this like too cartoony or? Well, he's uh, Scotty Young's got a really, really cartoony style, and it works for some things. I'm just not sure if it works for. Rock. He's very cutesy. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, I, know, I know there are people out there who like it and enjoyed it, and I'm pretty sure it was canceled a couple of times and then restarted and canceled again. So. The thing is, think... it doesn't look like he's like lacking talent. Seems yeah. like he's got a fair amount of talent, but. Uh... If it doesn't quite fit the character, that can well, be a problem. It's one of those things where um, artistic style may trump, you know, what people what people are looking for. I mean, I yeah. I I see a book like this and I go, "Oh, that's so cool! That's Scotty Young." But somebody who just saw the movie may see it and go, "What the hell is that?" You know. Yeah. Uh, Eagle forty three says, "Is his writing any good?" Um, I don't know. It's 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 silly. Um, it's silly, jokey type style. I mean, he actually his uh, his the comic series that he does for Image uh, Middle West is actually really really good. Is, is it like a raccoon kind of a badass character on the screen? He is. Uh, he's he's kind I, of. A, I haven't really seen many of these Marvel movies. Oh well, he's he's actually um, one of the better characters, more one of the more interesting characters they have, and uh, I, I don't know if they um, they don't use a lot, utilize him a lot, but um, he's definitely he's definitely a fan favorite. Which, by the way, is kind of funny. Um, what having having actually read comics before, guys, and I know everybody here has. What's the one thing that they do when they want to bring attention to a character who's a, a fan favorite for everybody? What's something they always do? I don't think too hard on the question. It's it's really easy. Put them in the trailer and focus no, no, on no, them. No, 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 no. That's what, what I would what do. do. I would just. What do they do in the, on them a lot of the trailer? What do they do in the comics when a character is really, really popular and they want to bring more attention? Oh, in to comics, them? they change it. <laughs> well, they change it, or they kill them. They kill them off. They make it a big deal. Oh yeah, they, yeah. Well, in the latest in the latest Marvel's previews, there's there's an issue of um, Guardians of the Galaxy, and you're looking at like the window of a spaceship, and there's like blood, a bloody handprint dripping down it, and the title of the story is. The death of Rocket Raccoon. Oh, I thought maybe they'd have him run over by like a Volkswagen bug or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> maybe if it was a space Volkswagen, maybe. That's true. They, they do um, kill. Yeah, they, well, they make a big deal. Are... Yeah, they take a character that everybody likes, everybody loves, and they do something dramatic with them, like Bethany said. Or they turn them into a woman. <laughs> they go in the or minority. They take them into a woman or minority, and they take their existing women and minority characters, and they don't do anything with them. Well, they do. They do stuff in order to make people, you know. Oh, Eagle Forty Three said, "Did Rocket get hit by a Mack truck too?" <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Passing people off the Marvel way. Actually, but they do that at DC as well. Where they, I remember when they killed Superman. I'm trying to remember where I put that previews. 
Oh, I know where it's at. Okay, hold on a second. See, I got so much crap around my desk. Let's see, Eagle says female Thor is the true Thor. Oh, okay. I'll have to take your word for it. Well, then they take a good character. They took a good character, and and had her play Thor, but it wasn't like really somebody you would think of as character. And then suddenly they're named Thor, right? Wasn't that? What I mean, they like because Thor's a real masculine name. I can't think of like a more masculine sounding name than Thor. Well, that's the whole thing. Thor is the guy's name. It's not like a title or something. It's his name. Had so, they handed, uh, handed off the hammer to somebody else for a while, they've done that before in the comic books. They, I mean, even had a crossover with uh, DC where uh, Wonder Woman uh, will... Um, I can't pronounce the name of the hammer. That old Mjolnir. Name. Yeah, Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Man, see now I'm thinking. Oh, here, oh, I was looking on the wrong side. And oh. Wonder Woman was worthy of of uh, blowing the hammer, but um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Come floor when she did that, though. Nobody Guardians like of the thirty other people did that. Sorry. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy number seven, uh, the death of Rocket. And you see the cover. Bummer. You see the cover where it's like the window in the hand. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of. Graphic that's what sad, that's but... what always confused me with the comic books is they never matched up to the movies unless they pull a plan and killing them off in the movie. I was like, I couldn't figure out if Spider that's why I couldn't figure out if Superman was married. Is it, you know, it'd be like maybe married in one, would it be married in the TV show or the book, you know, or it'd be married in the books, or I don't Do, know, I couldn't keep yeah. track of what was going on because they never seemed to line up very often. D says Beta Ray Bill was the best. He was the best version of Thor, uh, like an alternate version of Thor. I agree with you. He was great, but you know he was never called Thor. He was called Beta Ray Bill. Yeah, but he was you worthy know? to hold the hammer. Well, I mean Jane Foster's worthy to hold the hammer as well. But yeah, there were like a turn... wasn't like thirty different people who wielded um, was it Mjolnir since uh, you know over the years. I don't know. And they never became Thor until um, recently. Well, there was a one guy that was uh, Thunderstrike, and and there's a couple other people that held the held the hammer or a version of the hammer. And well, they, I mentioned Wonder Woman did in a crossover book. What was uh what was uh what was his name? Um, what was the name of the frog when he held the hammer? Was he still called Thor when he held the hammer? You know what the name of the frog is, sweetheart. I don't remember. I remember Frog Thor, yeah, but I don't remember. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just don't remember if they called him Thor if he if he had some other name. Google it. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever became named Thor until just recently. Um with a was a was a Jane was it Jane Foster? Jane yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just all of a sudden she becomes Thor. And that's what people got p- pissed off about, not that a woman Wielded the hammer. It wasn't. It wasn't that. It was just the way that they they did that. And then they went and used uh, what there was a lore. What was a uh, like Thor's grandpa? He's like talking about Israel. And I'm not gonna. I'm not. Gonna, don't, what? Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's somebody saying we don't appreciate your unsolicited remarks about Israel, and it's like, why would? That doesn't make any sense. Why, why, why would, why would an Asgardian god care about Israel? That's different. That's, I that's, mean, uh, that's got to, that's got to be something. Weird aren't they like knowledge. living? Aren't they like, like gods on their own planet and stuff? And they, well, in, in the in in, blah 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 blah, blah. in the um, in the comics. They are gods. In the in yeah. the in the movies, they're aliens. So okay, that's that's part of the difference. Well, they may be. I don't know. I don't think they've ever been considered aliens in the uh, in the um, 
in the comics. They've always been considered gods. All the Asgardians are gods. Are they related to the Watchers, or are those a different set of beings? I think the Watchers are some type of Celestials. You know, they're they're in that. I think they're in that class. But you know, to be honest with you, I'd have to go pull out all my old uh, um, Marvel Universe handbook and read up on them. And I haven't read up on them in a while. The, so. the cool thing is where uh, there was like a fan uh, theory that um, Stan Lee was one of the Watchers. Oh, that was actually kind of that was actually that way. yeah, that was actually the in the uh, one of the uh, the uh, extra scenes in Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy. I think it was where uh, Stan is saying, you know, I played a postman, and I played this, and I played that, and he'd been working for the Watchers the entire time, is what they were implying, which is actually kind of funny. That, that, yeah. actually, that actually works. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wonderful how they incorporated that in, because I think I, I think it was something that might have been like a fan theory beforehand, and then they kind of paid tribute to that. So was that a deleted scene, or...? I think it was just like an extra scene. I think it was after Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but I'm not 100% sure. Like it might have been something like uh, people stayed in the theater long, you know, after the credits, you might have seen that, or they put it on the DVD. Yeah. That's cool. Let's see. Silver Surfer held the hammer. Yes, he did. Mike Mignola did Rocket Raccoon. Yes, he did, and it was fantastic. It was really weird. It was. It's actually... Wow. Um, the Mike McNola Rocket Raccoon Limited series was a really weird story, but I think that had to do with the writer, and I'm and I don't remember exactly who the writer was, but um, Mike McNola did the art. There were there were like there were like assassin uh, clowns in it. There were you know other an <laughs> there were uh, there were other animals and and so forth. It was like it was it was weird. Do, do you know which which comic um, Rocket Raccoon was actually first introduced in? I don't know. The Hulk. Huh. He first appeared in The Hulk. <laughs> I would never have guessed that. There yeah. was a there was a um a storyline with the Hulk where he was traveling through different through different universes and all or something like that. And Rocket Raccoon was a character that was introduced in one of the issues. That's I forget funny. I forget which issue it is, but I mean That's funny. It, I wish I had it because you know, it's a that's one of those money issues did the hulk tend to travel a lot in the in the comics the way he did in the show because he was constantly traveling the show just trying to get get rid of he's trying to get the tablet guy was stalking him i don't really know i didn't get into the hulk until todd mcfarlane started drawing him and oh, then i I, I stuck around for dale keown because dale keown's hulk was awesome um highly recommend that to anybody who uh who wants who wants more hulk that dale the dale keown peter david hulk was probably some of the best hulks out there you know i think i have a really good i really like my comic book store the 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 people running it are great they're very helpful um right. so i just like it's like the stuff in the 50 cent bins just aren't as good as the stuff that you were getting out of the 50 cent bins but well, all, all stores are different when it comes to 50 cent bins. So, it's you know, we got like a lot of, I used to see a bunch of IDW in there, but maybe I just <laughs> didn't know what to look for the last time I was there. I found one that was a, Hany, a, a Tanya Harding comic book. <laughs> yeah, they Actually, made my, they, my mom found it. My yeah, mom they, uh, found they, it. They've made, they've made those as well. And I know so I know she, bought, she bought me, she bought me a Tanya Harding comic book. I'm not sure where it's at. I know there's Taylor Swift comics and like Ryan Reynolds comics and so forth. So, all right. This is going to be a bit of. Oh, wait a minute. Who else do we got here? JR came in. JR, JR Art 16 says, hey. And D says, I grew up with the David Banner TV Hulk, not Bruce Banner. Really? Okay. So, is that JR a person? Is somebody new? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Welcome. Oh, to the show. Welcome. Yeah. That is so cool. But um yeah, I I wasn't into the Hulk until McFarlane. And um it was the it was it was the the issue with Wolverine. 
the uh, 340, I think it was, or 240, whatever the number was, that everybody was looking for. You know, the one wow. that had, that had um, Wolverine on the cover with his claws popped, and in the claws you see the reflection of the Hulk coming at him. I mean, that was just that's just iconic and fantastic. And um, I never saw saw that, but that sounds fantastic. Oh, it is, it is, it is. It's a uh, it's it's one of the the better Hulk uh, storylines and and so forth. And I, I'm I'm thinking Peter David was writing it then. If not, it was one of those other classic uh, uh, Hulk art, uh, Hulk writers. But um, eventually, Dale Keown took over, and Dale Keown is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, he's he's like he was like um, Ed McGinnis. Ed McGinnis draws really big, strong, hulking characters really, really well, like like Superman and so forth. When he draws Superman, it's like fantastic. But so Dale, boys don't like that stuff. Yeah, Dale Keown was the same way. Whenever he would draw really hulking characters, it was it was fantastic. So you got no. That's not the wrong way to do it. You got to make the the guys look kind of androgynous and give them a soy boy beard and then make the women all like real like uh bulky like the she hulk looks now yeah no i don't think so and that's the idealized uh beauty white out, a white out pen so it should be good now oh excellent excellent yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta play around with that you gotta play around with those and we used to use a uh, whiteout pen and acrylic, white acrylic paint for mm -hmm. almost everything. And um, we, we were, we were in, in, back in high school, we, we all were in the stage uh, of splatter, which mm -hmm. is you would, you would draw, um, uh, you'd make a big area, just nothing but black. And then you would take a um, um, toothbrush Right. And an old toothbrush, yeah. stick it in white acrylic, and just splatter it everywhere. And we did that yeah. all the time. And it's and it sounds fun. <laughs> it's very. It could be very, very messy. So, but um, the whiteout pens yeah. allowed you more control over what you were doing. You know, it, you could get a lot of the same effects with a whiteout pen as the 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 acrylic splatter, without making as much of a mess. Yeah. So, Yes, but yes, play with it, experiment with it, and uh, see what you think. That was probably fun as a kid, though, to splatter stuff all over the place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things, my daughter um, went to the same art school that uh, Avery and I graduated from. My wife also graduated from there, and our friend Todd graduated well, that's from there. That's cool. The whole bunch, well, all of us went to that school. And uh, when she was in school, she, um, I never want to stop her from being creative. And um, yeah. she one night was working on a project and she needed a hard surface um, to use an X-Acto blade on. So you know what oh. she grabbed? She grabbed my hardcover copy of uh, the deluxe edition of The Walking Dead Volume 2. Oh, no. <laughs> and she used it as a cutting board. Oh no, that's and, that's probably yeah. where everyone should draw the line is. And then um the funny part was, and I, I told her afterwards, I said, you know, <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't hold it against her because I love the kid, you know. But when she got done doing the front the front of it, she flipped it over and did more on the back. So my <laughs> hardcover copy has these exacto blade slashes. Oh no. It's in the steel case. <laughs> No, no, no. This, it was a hardcover. It was like the, the large, oversized 9x12 deluxe edition of The Walking Dead. Oh, this Dead. is a book? Yes, it was a book. Yeah, okay. I was thinking yeah. about those DVDs, but that wouldn't, make, that wouldn't be big enough. Yeah, no. If, if, it, was, if it was one or of the Blue Rays, Rays, yeah, I probably would have killed her. But <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, my gosh. But I, I actually, the, the reason why I brought this up is I recently sold that edition um, at the flea market. Somebody was looking for Walking Dead stuff. And I said, well, I had this book and I was only selling, I've sold it for like five bucks. When normally it's like, it was like cover price, $30. But I said, it's it's all, I told her, I said, listen, it's it's all scratched up. And she said, I don't care. And I said, I'm just going to read it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Why are you selling so many great things? Because that was that was always part of the the plan. This was part of the business. Our plan was to we were going to have a comic book store. So oh. it just didn't well, happen. 
So, wow, so this is the plan Luke for... He won't be able to come and come in. He's he's busy. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't even see it there, man. Uh, I'm, I should be paying better attention. I'm just over here, just off in my own little world. <laughs> sure. Oh, hey, fearful milk. White All Doctor right. Martin's Bombay Ink is good, too. Okay. We'll have to check that one out. That's I tried his black, and it was more gray than it was black, the Dr. Martin's. Yeah. It was not a deep black. I was surprised that it was more gray. So I still have the bottle. I put, um, I think I just put Hobby Lobby ink, black ink into it. You know, India ink and works just fine for now. But I was surprised that it was more gray. Yeah, I always buy, I always buy the cheap stuff. The, um, the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, uh, it's the ink that people use for, for writing, the fancy writing. Oh, the calligraphy ink. The calligraphy ink, yes. That yeah. stuff's usually the cheapest, and I just use that. It's not the greatest, but it's one of those things where you layer it and layer it and layer it, and it looks just fine. Yeah, so. <laughs> whatever, whatever you like. I just, you know, I was just surprised it wasn't, it really wasn't comic book. It wasn't dark enough. That's really weird, because I know that's that's one of the ones that Avery, like, swears by when it, when it comes to inking. He also uses um, Doc Martin. Uh, I'm not sure if he uses that for the blacks or not, but I know he uses that for a lot of the color stuff. Yeah. Because so. yeah, because mine's uh, Dr. Phil Martin's uh, Black India ink. So it says matte black has always been good for me. All right. Mm -hmm. But I've just I've just got an entire bottle of. Now what do I have? I'll use this up before I buy anything else. Just black velvet waterproof indie ink from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just gotcha. keeping that till I run out. Yeah, we love our Hobby Lobbies down here. 50% off coupon works for me. It does. It does. We have. We also have, um, well, of course, we have Michael's. Mike does it too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael's is more of a hobby store than it is an art store. Yeah, but we also we good. also have a we have another chain down here called Ready Arts, okay. which is it's the place where if you were like a professional painter and you mm -hmm. needed like canvases and stuff like that, that was the yeah. place to go. Yeah. So if we if we're looking for something and we can't find it cheap at Hobby Lobby, we end up having to go to Ready Arts to find it. So yeah, we can get pretty much anything we need around here. There's a Dick Lick I think in Omaha, and that's about as fancy as it gets. Oh. The uh, Michaels and the uh, uh, Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Yeah. So I'll have to look into the mat. I'll go through all my through all this stuff first. So. Uh. All right. Here's my Rocket Raccoon in progress. I'm probably not going nice. to finish this. I'm not probably not going to finish this tonight because I do need to do a sketch in my sketchbook. So I may just finish up this face and then move on to that, but. At least, you know, I'm, I'm maintaining the theme. You know? I like it. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I think my the camera that I was recording died, so. Oh. <sighs> You've been having a lot of problems with the... Camera. I know. You know what it, you know what it was? My, my system, my operating system needed to, to update. And I went ahead against oh. my better budget and updated it. And I've had issues yeah. ever since. Yeah, that can happen. Um, I've had really bad luck with. I remember one time I was, I was just using iMovie. I never used the, like Final Cut Pro or whatever, and I just I went and made an entire, uh, like a TV show for public access, and then it got um, then something happened, and all the there was some update, and all the the, what was what's it called the tracking or whatever got off, so that the Sound didn't go along with the oh, video. That, it was yeah, I worked out for months. Oh, that sucks. I hate when that yeah. stuff like that happens. Yeah, and it was like, uh, that's the sort of problems I've had before with updates. Lorenzo, what do you do? Oh, that's now a good you, question. You don't have to tell us. You don't have to tell us because you don't want to dox myself. yourself. That's right. That's right. Yeah, don't dox yourself. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know. Because I thought you said something like you did stuff with TV or something on your uh, Facebook. Oh, well, I've done like uh, pu public access stuff before. Um, uh -huh. I used to uh, be a uh, public uh, radio DJ. Okay. Oh, you told us. Hardly, uh, hardly lucrative career choices, but they were interesting. 
So you just retired now? No, I'm I'm not not exactly. Okay. <laughs> complicated. Is a comp I understand. I understand complicated. My my wife tells me a story about how when my my mother in law when she was younger she actually was a DJ on the radio for one of the local affiliates or something. And the thing that always got me is she would tell the story about how she would play Twisted Sister. <laughs> oh, knew, wow. And if you knew my mother-in-law, <laughs> that's not her type of music, you know? That is interesting. <laughs> but she, she played Twisted Sister. And she also, she, um, I don't remember exactly why she did it, but she did a short uh, stint as a, a part-time person for the Jacksonville Jaguars. She was, she oh, worked wow. in the, she worked in the office for like, like a week and she met a whole bunch of the guys and, and that sounds interesting. Yeah. Even if somebody does that for a week, that's still cool. That's still some sort of interesting experiences. Yeah. I think she was, I think it was when, after she retired from her career job that she had, she was just looking for something to do. And so she went to like a part-time agency and just said, just keep me busy type of thing. And I, I, hey, whatever, float your boat. You know? Dillard says all ink is the exact same. Stop being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of just layering. Isn't that right, John? Just layer, layer, layer. Who was it? Oh, I think Br Brett Mitch... Mitch Brettweiser, I think, has his with, like, carbon particles in it. <laughs> I don't remember what brand it was. It was, it was like, $400 e-pens. <laughs> Avery wants you to, Andrew, Avery wants you to uh, name one Twisted Sister song. I can name a Twisted Sister song, man. Well, I'm having to look them up because that was one band I wasn't into back in the day. I was into, I listened to like uh, uh, Rad, um, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, all that stuff. I wasn't allowed to listen to any of that stuff because that man dressed like a woman with my mom's. <laughs> all those guys are, all those like glam metal guys. Uh, oh, yeah, the glam metal hair, guys. Hair metal. I was they, not allowed they, to listen to any of that stuff. Oh, my, my mom. Thought my my mom once told me that uh what was it uh Quiet Riot or no it was uh Molly Crew was super duper heavy metal which it really wasn't mm -hmm. maybe by her standards it was like some sort of extreme uh, but well, I remember in high school listening to like Poison and Van yeah. Halen and Def Leppard and yeah stuff like that. yeah that stuff. But Twisted Sister was one I wasn't really um, as into. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break from this cover because I'm actually liking it so far, and I know if I just keep adding to it this evening, I'm gonna screw it up. So I'm probably gonna come back to it at a later time. But <laughs> I, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, somebody else in the background. Most likely it'll be Groot or something. But uh, when you have when you're looking at it, you see Rocket screaming. Arr! But when you open it up, you see him shooting the gun, and you know, just. Mm -hmm. And this will be this will be an interesting one to put up. And it says Dillard says Mitch is a hack. Rick Piper can achieve the same effect with a rose art marker. Okay. <laughs> Avery says Dillard, you're on crack. <laughs> oh. So, which, which Mitch is he talking about? Mitch Brett Brett Weiser. Does a rocket red. Oh. Or not? He does um red rooster. Red rooster. Yeah. yeah. He's quite impressive. I yeah. am still um, eagerly awaiting my uh, copy. Yeah. And I'll phrase it that way. Mitch is <laughs> you know, a, um, Mitch is I one might of those actually, people. I might order a second one because a buddy of mine wants one. So, Mitch is one of those artist artists, you know. Yeah, he he's, is. He's not just a just... comic book artist. He's a he no. could be a fine art artist. I, I get the feeling he's putting a ton of of love and care into creating this. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, because, I think that's uh, what Ethan's Ethan's weaknesses too is everything has to be completely detailed, which is why it's taken him so long. Well, well I'm sure it's going to be very, very beautiful. Well, I, I tell you what, guys. Um, you know, given I, Ethan's ability, you know, I'm um, sure you know that's why it's taken him so long because I think everything has to, every page has to be perfect. Yeah, and it's well, going to be probably the same with Mitch, and I don't even see Mitch live streaming all that much, so he might even be spending even more time on it. 
I don't know. Yeah, well, I, Doug, I Doug Doug Tenable has set the bar for all future yeah. Yeah, all yeah, future yeah. Comics Gate projects so high. That that book, Bigfoot Bill and the Sketchbook Ashcan, are just absolutely freaking fantastic. And I mean, it's almost yeah. to the point where unless you're willing to go as far as he did, you know, I mean. That is because what I think is funny is if you'll notice some of the SJWs when they start talking about, you know, Comics Gate not fulfilling and being laid and and they're always mentioning they always mention a few, yeah. but they never, ever, ever mention Bigfoot Bill because Bigfoot he over fulfilled if that's even possible. Yes. yes. He went way beyond anyone's expectations. No. It was like, wait a minute, I've got several books, you know, that were fulfilled. I have not had a problem with someone bailing out. Yeah, well, I mean, so no one, no one from Comics Gate. Has... Actually, I went, I went through a list of all the projects I backed, and I think there's only like three or four I haven't received yet. You know, yeah, there's all three. the other ones have been fulfilled and are com or either they've either been fulfilled or they're on their way. You know. Yeah. Yeah, a few of them were delayed, but um, but I, there's not any that I haven't received. No, I got one friend who didn't get their um, whatever they ordered. I don't know if it's a comic. Uh, I think they were talking about Comics Gate, but since they didn't go into detail, I'm just, you know, I'm taking their word for it, and I'm just going to say that I'm unaware of who that is, yeah. and I didn't order from that person. So if it happened, it happened in one case out of, like, I don't know how many projects there are out now, more than I can even keep track of, so... Yeah. Well, Lorenzo, I recently went through a couple more of my uh, my boxes. I didn't do them on camera, so I it's you know sometimes I need to do it quicker. But I found some gems I wanted to share with you. And if Avery's still watching, I think he might have already left. But uh, one a couple of them are like right up his alley. But these actually have value to them. Uh, anywhere from ten to to $25 a P guide at base. So I'll probably be holding off on them. But um, I got, I don't know where I picked this up, but Ronin books one and books two. These are uh, Frank Miller from really early DC stuff. Uh, these are amazing. -ish. I don't remember how many books were in this series, but I, for somehow I got books one and books two and they're both in really good condition. So, oh, hey, Hey, Avery. <laughs> These I I did not get these when they originally came out, but these are fantastic. The it's it's Frank Miller, but Frank Miller doing something new and interesting with the style. I don't think he ever went back to this style, but it's still That's very, very cool. so yeah. I got it's both got a very unique look to it. Then I have this Just, one. This is wow. um this is the Wizard exclusive sketchbook for Cliffhanger which was um, an imprint that was coming out through Wildstorm back before Wildstorm was bought by DC, and it was being published through Image. And the, the three big launches was Danger Girl by uh, J. Scott Campbell, um, Joe Madura's Battle Chasers, and Humberto Ramos's Crimson. And this was the free sketchbook thing that came in. It turns out this thing's like worth 10 or 12 bucks. In really good condition so i'm like well damn i better pull that out of my dollar bin and not you know type of thing Are the sketches and, is good ever oh yeah there's some really great stuff in here i'll show you this was this was the book that they put out through wizard magazine it was like you bought wizard and you got something free and this is what yeah that's they need to have something like that they need well, to have the, a wizard magazine because the cover is a little dented but you know what that's still that's still okay. you know had i known about wizard magazine that would have been a perfect thing for me because I was always confused about what was going on in the comic yeah. book scene. Well, that's one of the reasons why I still pick up previews is because previews gives you an idea of all the stuff that's coming out. And that's you know. true. But uh, let's see. You got you got Battle Chasers. These were the original designs for some of the characters, which were really cool. And then some of the villains. I really like this one right here. This looks very much like my um, my mushroom snake, Avery. I wonder if I was inspired by that back in the day. And then we have uh, Red Monica, oh, wow. who's uh, who had um, wonderful assets and was very popular at the time. It's sexist. I know. <laughs> Good God. We got to take the feminine out of feminism. I, I think I need to. Start <laughs> I don't understand that. I got to get back. To, I got to get back to drawing ladies again. Maybe I should just start yeah. tracing some of Joe Madura's stuff. Maybe that'll work. It's a possibility. 
Uh, and then you have Crimson by um, Humberto Ramos. I loved Humberto Ramos' style back then. He was very much the kid-friendly kind of guy, but he was doing something dark and, and you know, uh, gothic-y with Crimson because it was about That's vampires. Cool. But, yeah, very, very interesting style. And then we got original wow. pencil pages from him, which were pretty cool. That's a good and way then, to... It's a good way to introduce people to different things. Oh yeah, and then, have something like this. And this was something that people would people would go out and they'd buy this, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it was well, he, it was guys, kind of like the preview. I think the previews, I guess, like at my comic book store, I think I've gotten them for free before. Yeah. Well, these these guys when they pro when they started publishing the cliffhanger titles, uh, got very popular very very quickly. And well, they were already popular artists, but the series were like. You know, everybody loved them, and they great. And then Danger Girl, like I don't know if it ever finished its original story arc. I know, I know, Battle Chasers got canceled, like in the second story arc. The only one that actually, the only one that actually finished it and went to the very end of the story was Crimson. But he ended up getting it published, I think, through a different company. It wasn't through Wildstorm when it finished. So, but this was definitely a, kind of a cool little comic. And then this here, I don't remember who gave this to me, but uh, the Rocketeer Adventure Magazine first issue from Comico. This is actually the very first appearance of the Rocketeer. I don't know if uh, you guys, any of you guys have actually seen this before. I've seen the movie, but not this. Yeah, this is amazing. This is the, the original comic, and this was like 85, I think. Oh, 88, 88. And you can see there's some... Damage on the cover, so I mean. I've got the absolute rocketeer. But this You've is got cool. the absolute rocketeer. Oh yeah. Well, I, I have I have the um I have the uh the artist edition, the large oversize that shows the original art. I, I love that. the artwork. It's got yeah. kind of this kind of old timey feel to it. Yeah, this is where his girlfriend was the was the uh, Betty Page look like. There's actually something. There's actually a, a page in here. Let me see. Even at the time, it was retro artwork, right? It's supposed um, to look like it was from an earlier time. Yes, yes. But um, uh, what's his name? Um, I'm dying here. I can't. Dave Stevens. Uh, it was a fantastic artist to begin with. So, but he very it looks much like had a, a gold, like like they were trying to take a golden age type, or like kind of a pulp era kind of. Yes, feel. very much so. Yeah, check out this. Uh, this was his girlfriend. I forgot what her name was. I'm sure oh, it's nice. in here somewhere. But she was very much a Betty Page, supposed to be like a Betty Page character. Ugh, all the, all that sex on one page, you know? People should be ashamed of themselves for looking at stuff like that. Yes, Joe Madura's art was very dynamic. Very, very dynamic. And then I found Nightwing number one. This, oh. came, out, this came out in 96. And uh, if it's in really good condition, it's actually worth some good money. So. Oh, Chuck Dixon. Yep. Eagle 43 says, hail the pulps. Ain't that the truth? Here you go. This is what my husband has. I don't know if you can see it or oh, not. Oh, wow. We'll go, we'll go check it out. Oh, wow. Nice. So he's got... Now, how big is that? Ah. Uh, that is... looks huge. Like a... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by... Eight by twelve. Very nice. Wow, Very that's nice. impressive. That's oh, that's wow. kind of like that's kind of like a Bigfoot Bill size. Very cool. So yeah, okay, this is real. Oh, you haven't even. So, Did yeah. you nice. just break his comic? Uh oh. Oh no! Now I gotta buy him a new one. I'll have to read <laughs> this one too. You know what? I'm gonna have to find where uh -oh. I put my. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find. Nice. I'm gonna have to find where I put my um my um. Artist, artist tag, edition, dude. and actually share that know. with you all. I know. I don't want to know. <laughs> so, is that cover the same one as uh, on Andrews? Uh yes. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Which one do you have? The uh, oh, hold on a second. Let me grab it again. Yeah. That's probably like an updated version. Oh no, actually, yeah, it looks very much, very yeah. much like this one. So. Okay. So the one. The one Bethany was showing that's uh so that's is that more the size of how they draw it? No, 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 no. That's that's like a, a like an oversized comic. The the original size are eleven by seventeen. They're 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 much they're much bigger. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll I'll get my I'll get down my artist edition. I think I know where it's at. Matter of fact, I think I can see it from here, but it's underneath a whole bunch of stuff. But I'll I'll we'll make we'll show show it off in another video at another time. So and we have to show off each other's collections, right? That's right, that's right. That's what we're doing. Mine's here. bigger than yours. <laughs> oh well. I've heard that. I've heard that a lot from a lot of people. So did did um it, so does Avery uh he's not in here to represent himself. But uh, does does he just skip over the the writing in, in your books, Andrew, or is that, or does he just not read? Does he not read the stories and just look at the art in general? I think he probably just looks at the art in general. He does he does ask me from time to time what day what time of day is it, in, when he do, when he's doing the coloring. So, but do you think he does that with all comic books? What's that? You think he does that with all comic books? Maybe. I'm severely, I'm severely dyslexic, so. And well, but I got a ton of comic books that I ordered and trying to try to get through them. A ton of graphic I, novels. I read. I, I read. My camera's acting up again. Just nothing is going to work this evening. Nothing is working correctly. All right, hold on, guys. Turn off the camera. Turn the camera back on, and there we go. Okay. That Immortal Hulk thing was so wordy when he like gives this huge lecture. It started off cool, but then it just got to this whole like uh, section where where the Hulk was very articulate now. Okay. Okay. This is making different beeps. I wondered. I mean, it didn't take me that long to read it. Uh, it's just you know only a few minutes, but um. It's still quite wordy at the end. Like the Hulk shouldn't be that articulate. No, he shouldn't no, be giving really someone not. a speech before he smashes them. He should just smash them. Well, it depends on if you're writing the Hulk or if you're writing the Hulk as if you were giving people lectures. Okay. You know? Yeah. Use, use this uh, SJW Hulk, I guess, no? I mean, it's not like he really... I mean, that was the part where he acted like an SJW. He gave this long speech about why shouldn't women shouldn't commit crimes at the end. Oh, I know why it's beeping. Okay. Here. Oh, I can't because I'm using this. Okay. Here. And it's like the more longer speech, the more pre premeditated his smashing became. <laughs> Before the Hulk was, you know, was Bruce Banner losing his temper and he'd do things and then later on he might kind of regret them. With this I don't know. It's... Yeah, I never, I didn't pick, I didn't pick up any of the issues of the Immortal Hulk. I it liked... was cool, but they never showed him doing anything. It yeah. was scarier that way, but but the long lecture kept the Immortal Hulk. You don't have that, okay? Yeah, the long lecture it kind of ruined the effect. I mean, they were going for like a Hitchcock kind of thing, where where a lot of the action happens off of off the screen or off of the page or whatever. I didn't know that they, was cool. But... When, when they first solicited that, didn't they imply that it was supposed to be like a, almost like a horror comic? Because they said yeah, that it, it had some like... fun. Uh, it looked kind of like a horror movie the way that it's drawn, and but it's got this nice feel of uh, being out in the Southwest. It's got this nice, um, just the, just the scenery and everything. Mm -hmm. I think the TV show is kind of like that. Oh, who was the artist? Wasn't it Ed Ben uh, Ed Benes? Uh, oh, geez, I'm screwing up the name. Who did the art on that? The Immortal Hulk, or at least at the beginning of it, he did the the art of it. I have to look this up. Yeah, he's a really good artist. So yeah, the artwork was amazing. It's just that you know, and this, the thing was the guy. Yeah, it's 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 the guy's got me on a black list. N not not him, but the writer. Yeah, yeah. All because of somebody I follow on, on YouTube or follow, I mean, what did I follow on Twitter? You know, he's just followed uh, D Diversity in Comics. He doesn't even have his account. I mean, he keeps deactivated most of the time. Only activates it like once a month to keep from being deleted. Yeah. And I'm still, I think I'm still black. Well, that's because you're bad. You're bad, bad, bad man. I guess so. I'm blocked by several of these uh, pros. 
Wow. Well, they're probably robot block, meaning if you're friends with someone else, they'll. Yep. Help. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what well, it is. Like you, yeah, they but... use a blacklist. Yeah. You know, I've only ever blocked one person from either Twitter or Facebook. And I'll tell you the story because it's, it's, uh, it's a guy that reached out to me and he, he sent me a friend's request through Facebook. And it turns out we had like two or three other people, you know, in common. So, you know, if that's the case, I usually, you know, okay, fine, whatever, no big deal. And he immediately sent me a private message that asked me a question about comics. And I thought, okay, this is no big deal. And he then, and I, the question was like, who's your favorite X-Men or something like that. And I'm like, well, rogue and Colossus and, and so forth. And then, then he came back and asked another question. And then when I answered it, he said, no, 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 I'm talking about the cartoon now. And I'm like, what the hell? It had to have been a kid and it had to be somebody really crazy. And because he, uh, every time I'd answer the question or tried to answer the question, he kept, he was just being really, really, really weird. And I said, mm, this ain't going to continue. So I unfriended him and blocked him. <laughs> and he sent me friend requests like two or three more times. And I'm like, mm, no, 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 no. We're done here, buddy. Because it just, it was just like really weird. And it was like, here, answer my question. And if I didn't answer right away, he said, are you going to answer the question? It's like, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, We're not doing that guy. But uh, other than that, I've never blocked anybody else, you know? That's weird. So, huh. It might have been you. No, I'm just kidding. Did you ever send me a, a friend's request and then ask me a whole bunch of crazy questions? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Well, then it wasn't you then. That seems odd. It was it was really weird. I, I think the guy was in in Europe or something. The kid. I'm 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 almost guarantee you, it was a kid. But um. I let him in. I let him in because he he we had mutual friends, and now I don't anymore. <laughs> I don't just accept what my other friend, my other crazy ass friends are friends with. So. Yeah, I usually check to see who they are, make sure they're normal, you know, before, accept, you know, before accepting. Eagle43 said maybe he was a furry. Yeah, that's, that, is <laughs> a that is always a possibility. That is always a possibility. But he was getting, he kept asking me questions. And then he told me, I think he said it was for a project he was working on, which made me think, you know, that it was a kid. But, um, if I didn't answer right away, he was like, are you going to answer the question? And it's like, no, no, we're done. <laughs> we are done. So who was the artist that you were talking about with the Immortal Hulk? I think it was, was um, Ed Bennett's or is what I think it is. Let's see. Oh, hey, Evan. So this is Lauren's How are you doing? Hey, Evan Von Scriver, how's well, it going? Hey, There's a whole Von, Von Scriver family, it turns out, because they who made it, an appearance in, in my chat before. Oh, yeah? He brought in uh, different members of the Von Scriver family. <laughs> so, the Al Ewan and, and uh, Joe Bennett. Joe Bennett, there we go. That's who I was and thinking. And then there's, uh, was it Roy Jose? And Paul Mounts. Paul Mounts, yeah, as a colorist. I don't know who the guy before that was. The guy who does the pop balloons or what? The lettering, probably. Maybe. The maybe. letters, maybe. Which is important. I want to kiss the letterist. As somebody, just... who, as somebody who has lettered his own work, it, it is a very important job. It's just there's different... Uh, Artists, let's see, L. Ewing, Lee, was it Cobbett? I can't even see. It's too tiny. And Paul Mounts. Yeah. Lee Garbett. Or Garbett. If he wants to know if I can, we can dry Sherman Tank. <laughs> oh, that was discussed <laughs> on um, Cross Comics earlier. Sherman Tanks, I think. Oh, goodness. 
I somehow that came up. Tank, not without screwing that one up royally. Actually, Tank asked me if I would do a drawing for him of a ferret in a tank. So uh -huh. I may have. To, I'm. I'm uh, that's definitely on my list of something to do. So I think Manny drew him one. Oh really? Oh, Over that's gonna be God. awesome. I gotta. I gotta go check that out then. Yeah, I think Manny did one for him. Tank. I think like Joe Bennett's on a, a number of these books. But not every but he's not listed on every one of these. He's kind of a popular artist. Um I think he started the series. I don't know if he continued it all the way to the uh, if how many issues he did of it, but I know he was I don't think he's currently on the title, but He's just not he's not listed on each and every one, but he is on quite a few of these covers that I'm looking at. Well, um Adam Hughes I mean uh, not Adam Hughes, um Alex Ross was doing the covers for Immortal Hulk for the longest time, so what I'm seeing is is when they list the when they list the artists like he's on like even issue seventeen. And and I think and they're showing like twenty one issues on here. Okay. September 2019, that doesn't make any sense. Let's see. Maybe they mean 2018. Forget the ferret, draw him an Eevee in a tank. <laughs> an Eevee in the tank? Him. This is the page I'm looking at. It's not making any sense as far as a year. Put it, I'll type in the other chat. Anyone who wants to figure out what the heck the page is talking about. I I just, the sketch I'm working on is uh, Hero's sister, Winter. I'm really starting to like her. I think I may have to talk to Michael about potentially changing um, the story for book for four. Because uh, originally book four was supposed to go on a pirate adventure. But I really like drawing Winter. I think I want to draw her in book four. So we'll I think you can draw women anymore. Well, I can draw anamorphic, you know. You can draw furries. That's right. Exactly. I can draw furries. Actually, I was going to draw her. This particular image was going to be her, like, in actually, like, a sexy pose. And I thought, you know, I really, I shouldn't go that far so soon. I mean, I, she is my character. I can do whatever I want with her. But you know what? I've got a, I've got an image to, to uphold here, right, guys? So she's an adult character? Is she an adult character? Yes, she would be considered an adult character. She's an adult furry. She's not a, she's not a cub. No, she's good. no. She's at, least, she's at least seven years older than Hero. I think I think in the in the the time frame that we sat down, she's like the fourth one, the fourth child. So, this hero has ten brothers and sisters. Oh, that are older than him. Interesting. Yep. And then he has two sisters that are actually younger than him. Did you grow up in a, a large family? No, but my 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 mother did. My mother okay. was my mother was one of six. Here here's a here's a funny story family wise. My mother was the oldest of six, and pretty much everybody in the family except one person had two children, and then everybody else, you know. But um, my grandmother was one of six. And her dad, her mom passed away, and her dad married a woman who also had six children. And so together they had 12, and then together they had two more. Uh, it's like of, the extreme Brady Bunch. Yes, it's an extreme Brady Bunch. But yeah, he married a woman who, whose husband had passed away, and she had six children. And he had six children, and his wife passed away. And then they had two more um, but one of them, one of the kids died 
in childbirth, I think. Oh no. So yeah. It happens back in those days. That that's not uncommon. But uh so she was one of thirteen. Even though technically she was only related blood wise to seven of them. Was anyone else confused when they found out there's a hero in this hero? What's that? No. Um, I can't think is it Muttman and Macho Dan, I think. Was is that Evan, is that doing hero, the H I R O version? It's yes. supposed to be like an AI, AI yeah, integrated they, thing. He was yeah. Yeah, they just they just relaunched their Indiegogo campaign. Oh, they so. relaunched it. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah, just, that, that just, part is a bit confusing. But I remember it being confusing before. Well, they're not gonna get it mixed up with the hero Indiegogo campaign because that's over. That actually ended this morning at about four o'clock this morning. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to get into it. No, 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 no. It's not a big deal. It's a, I feel bad. Well, I guess one another one I wanted, and it's just my well, it wasn't out. it wasn't going to happen anyway. But but here's the thing: when Avery and I launched the first one, um, the first Hero Indiegogo campaign, it ran for 30 days, and we raised thirteen hundred dollars. Um, we relaunched it the second time. And we had over a hundred. We had a hundred backers. I was going to say over a hundred. No, we had a hundred backers, and it got up to forty-three hundred dollars. So we did almost three times the amount of the first campaign. And oh, that's great. a lot of the comic skaters that are out there, uh, especially the more successful ones, will tell you, you need to first build an audience and then launch your campaign. Yeah. Well, I have three hundred and thirty subscribers on my YouTube channel, and I got a hundred backers on my Indiegogo campaign. That's yeah. almost that's almost a third of my subscribers. None of them get as many as a third of their subscribers for their campaigns. You know? Even Ethan doesn't get a third. He I think he gets you, like a, I think in total he's got sweet. like I think the average is about ten percent of your viewer. And one sometimes less. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So I so I'm actually doing pretty good when it comes to the number wise. It just wasn't enough to reach the goal. And Avery and I have sat back and we've talked about it. And we think we're looking into to different printers and we're looking into different options. And we're going to try to, number one, set a more reasonable goal that we can probably that we can reach. Mm -hmm. you know? um, because we, we know we know there's people out there that want it and we know there's people willing to 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 give us money for it which is which is fantastic that's great but we needed to make more reasonable goal that we can reach in order to make sure that we can get it to the people so because we were looking in we were looking into like print ninja and if you're not ordering at least four to five hundred copies you're wasting your time and money so that's why we set our goal where we did because we were needing to print at least 400 copies that's a lot of that's a lot of people to buy yeah yeah well well ethan confused a lot of people with these uh with his recent tweet and i don't think his intent was bad or anything i think it's just kind of his numbers don't make any sense to me so oh, if you say, like, well, like 5, readers people. are beating up on me for not doing live streams to help promote their projects lately and and they shouldn't do that i'll add that no. i'm adding that part to it they should beat up on him for That's not, his not job. doing live streams. He says, ladies and gentlemen, you must create your own audiences and build your own platforms. That's I right. agree with that, too. I but the part I, I think is really odd is if you don't have at least 25K followers or subscribers, you shouldn't crowdfund yet. Well, no one's going to get that. Yeah, he's the, I, think if, if, I think he's the only one in Comicsgate who has that. Yeah. If he's got that many... But yeah. I, I, the, only the one. average when they were figuring stuff out is like one out of every ten of your subs is going to buy it. Yeah, so yeah. and I don't think hundred thousand dollars. It's not going to happen. And I think uh, just the YouTube presence. Um, some people uh, that, that that might not be good enough. Uh, some people I uh, see uh, like a uh, little girl lethal. I saw that promoted. I think months ahead of its release on Twitter. And a lot of people are like using Instagram as well. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I think that I think uh, one of the books that was very successful, one of the projects, I think was mainly through Instagram, which I don't know how people promote things on there. I don't find it that useful of a, a site, but I know a lot of young people use that. And 
Oh, Ethan Van Scriver asks, what about digital? Um, I am of the same mind when it comes to digital as EVS is, and that is, that's the absolute last step in the process. You don't offer it at the beginning because it's too easy for people to, you know, to swipe it and give it to somebody else. It's, you make that the absolute last step. You know, once all the printed versions are out, once the hardback versions, once the deluxe versions, once, you know, once you have, yeah. have made the, the, all the, the print versions available, then you can make the digital because, but I'm, that's like, I don't like doing prints. I don't like making prints, even though people have asked for prints and I've sold prints. It's because I don't collect prints. I don't like prints. Yeah. Like, I, I'd rather, I, I got burned at a convention one time because I was dumb this guy had some original pages out for sale and mixed in with those original pages were color prints of his pencils. And I found one that was just, that blew me away. It was so beautiful. And I asked him how much, and he said $10 or something. And I'm like, I'm looking at this original pencil page going, wow, this is incredible. And I bought it. And it wasn't until I got home and I started looking at it closely did I realize it wasn't an original pencil. Oh. Thing. It was a print done on like cardstock paper. So it made it look like if he had told me it was a print, I would have been okay with it. But he didn't. And it was. And it was just so oh, – I felt boy. I felt so taken that yeah, I, I kind of said to myself, I'm not buying prints anymore. I'm not buying prints. I'm not – I don't want to do prints. I don't want to make prints. And – you know, I, I kind of feel the same way about when it comes to uh, digital. I don't collect digital. I don't buy digital. I don't read digital, you know. But then again, if there's people out there that want it, there it's going to come. It'll eventually come. It'll eventually happen. We'll eventually make it available. But it's not going to be step one. It'll well, be some people, <laughs> uh, a small number of people, I think, uh, do well with the web comics and then come up with an Indiegogo. And the small number of people I'm thinking of is is Wanpool. People who hate Wanpool, they have been able to go and they do web comics, if I recall correctly, and then they turned it into. This, this is my favorite print so far. As soon as I can get a. Uh... Oh, who's that by? Let me see. This is by Gary Shipman. Oh, okay, very nice. So, I won this one when he was doing his. Oh, nice. I don't know if. And I think I think Wanpool, I think maybe I think their Indiegogo might even be a new story based upon a based upon the webcomic. You know. Yeah, Avery says fans like prints, sell them what they want. Yes, and that is absolutely yeah. true. Because I had people asking me over when they especially when they saw the double page um turtle illustration that I did that not the, the hero page. Do you have this in a print? Do you have this in a print? And I said screw it i'll make it into a print and i took them to one show and i completely sold out and now granted i was paying the cost for these prints was minuscule and people were paying me you know two dollars for a piece that i paid maybe a quarter for now granted like i said they're just they were just simple prints they weren't you know you know great paper it was it was card stock paper or it was a cover stock paper and i made them so that if somebody wanted to color them, they could because it had the grainy texture to it. So it wasn't like I was investing a lot of money and I sold out. Mm -hmm. It's like, cry me, you know? But I'm not a fan of prints and that's why I don't push them. But yeah, yeah. The same thing with digital. I'm not a fan of digital. That's why I don't do it. But yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it's part of the plan and it makes sense to make it the last. And I think there's a big difference between a webcomic and like a PDF file with, um, which is cool if you get if you get a PDF for free. I got a PDF for free from a, a certain comic book creator who's uh, pushing his book. That's great. It's just I'm not going to go home and spend a bunch of money on a PDF file. Yeah. Well, actually, if somebody is interested in reading a digital copy of Hero, uh, there are digital copies available out there. I don't push it very much, but they're out there. If you go to lulu.com, you can find... Hero Book One. Here, I'll even show it to you guys. It's still it's still out there. I put them out there a while ago, and I don't get a lot of sales from them mainly because I don't I don't do it very often, push yeah, it very I, often. I like prints because again, I couldn't afford that actual Spider Man from Gary. It was like you know that's probably a five hundred dollar thing, and like you know, but I won that print. But it's like I just can't wow. afford the whole art. Yeah, 
the things I the things I have up on my uh, if you search for me on Lulu, you can see Hero Book One Digital Edition. It's five dollars. We have Hero Book Two. It's also five dollars. Or you can get both of them for nine dollars. And it's a PDF copy of the book, but it is the black and white and gray. And it's also there's been some slight edits. There's some been some changes to the story. There's been additional text that's been added. So huh. these files are actually kind of out of date. But if you really want them, you can get them. But I guarantee you when I do the color version, it'll be so much yeah. better. And then I have some digest editions of my ink spots, which are my sketchbooks from 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. They're five bucks a piece. And you can buy them and print them and... It's on-demand stuff. But actually, I should probably take that stuff down because nobody's looking for that stuff. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it is out there. If somebody really is really wants it, it's out there. Ugh. Yeah, Ethan says. E e Ethan e Evan von Scriver says five dollars is way too low. Yeah, probably. So. So what's the right. good pricing for digital, or should it go by pages? I have no idea. I haven't looked into it, to be honest yeah. with you. Because I, some of them are like five, some of them are ten, you know. So I just wondered. I'd rather have a real copy if I could, but see, like I, um, Pope Fire helped me out with Detective Dead, and that's a digital. I don't know. Yeah. Are, oh, that's cool. So, Man. you know. I really like what Pope Fire does with them. Um, helping people get books yeah she, i i needed some help at the time that's the one i wanted she helped me get gary's sketchbook and also uh detective dead well, that's excellent so yeah. so uh gary's got his own wikipedia page i noticed oh wow so i didn't i mean i didn't know that um people talk about him like like uh with a lot of respect and i respect his drawing but was he like uh did he work for like a big company or something, or? I know he worked for Disney for a little bit. I'm watching. Oh. My, um, he did work for Disney, I think, in the educational department. Um, for I, I, he did he did Packins Land. Um, yeah. What was so? What is that exactly? Because I saw that it was on Indiegogo, but I didn't know what exactly. But I've never read it before. Oh, Packin's Land is his. Um, that is was his, really well uh, known. Well, it was it was a project that he did many many years ago, and I think he he uh, has fine is finished it is what it's happened. Well, and that's I've, what he's... Got, I've got volume one. Let me turn my. Phone oh on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he had the idea was to do what four or five volumes. I think he only got to like three or four. Yeah. Um. So I mean, the artwork is beautiful, and. Uh, um. But it's about a, oh, what's his name? Paul. And Paul is, Packin's Land is the land that he, he walks into. And he finds himself into a tunnel, a cave, because he's exploring. And uh, he, he walks in and finds himself in, in a whole other world. And he can't get out. He's not sure what happened. And uh, he, he follows some footprints and some blood trails. And he ends up finding an eagle that gives him a little feather. Or, and it's magical. So now he's kind of stuck. He's lost. He realizes he doesn't know where he's going. That's where he runs into the animals that are trying to help him get get back. But they've got some other stuff going on that they need his help with. And so it's a whole bunch of Avengers, you know, adventures. But I really liked it. That's why I was happy to. He he was so sweet to extend the campaign for me, so I can get the entire 400 and some odd pages, and I've only got the first 110. Oh, you did extend the campaign? Yeah, he did. So at 75, if you buy the That's hardback, uh, Mike Miller is doing a wraparound jacket for it. Oh, wow. So if you get the hardcover at 75, but you can't beat 400 pages for 75. But, or you can get the, uh, I think he's got a soft cover for like 40. Well, that's great because uh, there's so many, there's so many of these uh, different projects I want to back all around the same time. Yeah. So, but yeah, his it's all black and white. I think he's updated. You know, he's obviously improved over the years. But these are all about his characters and how he's helping them to save the, his king, their kingdom, because it's in danger. While they're trying to help him get home at the same time. 
Are they like talking animals and stuff? Yeah, they talk. Oh, he's that's got, really cool. Yeah, he's got bears. He's got a bat. Um, let's see. He's got a he's got a wolf. Let's see. I know he's got the characters in the back here. Um. Yeah, Hazak is the gorilla. Jeremiah is the elephant. Lila is the raccoon. Nam Na Namir is the tiger. Rasha is the uh something. Samson is the killer whale. Sidek is the king, and T nice. is the flying squirrel. So I mean his. So yeah, I got volume one. And I wanted to read it because that was the only way I could get to it, and you know, so it was really cool. So did people know about Packin's Land before he came up with his uh, YouTube channel? Was he somebody who was kind of like had a cult following, or no? I don't think anybody really knew about it unless you were into comics. Because I, well, I, I was never into it till I got into till I watched Doctor Strange and fell in love with the movie, and then I realized my husband had an omnibus downstairs and. And uh, went through the entire volume one and was hooked. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing the Packins Land comics when I worked at the comic book store. Way back. Okay. Then, you know? So, yeah. so this book was in the stores. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, in stores. He has seventeen issues or something like that. You can find them on eBay for a few dollars a piece if you wanted them. You know, that way. It seems like he started in like around ninety six or something. Yeah. With, yeah. With that series. Yeah. And then it's like Caliber Comics and Image Comics. Yep. Yeah, 2000. Yep. And then he just went through him. several companies. Yeah, and then they finally dropped him. And, uh, and Peckins present. He was never able to finish get, getting it all printed out into a book, which is what he's always wanted to do. And apparently Peckins presents. It sounds like sounds like that was like, I'm not sure if he's still using the company. It sounds like that was the last company. Well, his, be, his, oh, it's his, a self. It's a self uh, printed. His so, his comic his comic uh, William the Last was the one that I found on um um oh what is that that website where you can read digital comics oh uh, comics no it's webtoons webtoons I jeez I can't forget oh. I keep forgetting about that but yeah I found him through uh, uh recently like within the last few years uh with his series <laughs> William the Last which I think. He's he's publishing the the printed versions through uh, like IDW or Boom or something like that, yeah. which is really cool. So you are not mine. So why do I even let you in? Nah. Damn cats, right? Well, he was at my door last night. He's obviously fed because he's not fat and he's not skinny and he's friendly. So, and I, you know, so uh, I have no cat food. <laughs> and he wants back in again. So uh, it's yeah, cold. I I, I muted myself for a few minutes while you guys were talking because my daughter came in and was trying to get her cat out of here, which I greatly enjoy. Her cat's a pain in the ass. Well, this one's super sweet. He's he's all gray with white socks and a white chest. Hey, buddy. Yes, guys, this has become a cat channel. That is right. We are now a cat channel, officially. I'm just kidding. Don't Does anyone that. remember Socks, the White House cat from the Clinton era, Clinton administration? I have no food at my house. I'm pretty sure he's, he's not, not around anymore, but yeah. I remember he was like, uh, <laughs> he was the best one. You can come up if you want. Oh, there he you go. Like... Evan Von Scriver says, kitty. <laughs> now I can give you a little bit of love. For and then you. before that, there was uh, Lucky, the, uh, the, 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 the dog that. Uh, no, you don't get to climb up here. Right oh. here. <laughs> Don't you love it when they invade you're your space, especially you when you're on bag? camera? Uh, whoever owns you, are you a flea bag? Sounds like he's yours now. I don't want him. All right, guys, I'm going to do you all a super huge favor, and I'm not going to do an episode of the Peep Show tonight. We're going to take a break from that for this one. Well, that's uh, that's probably for the best. Yeah, it is for the best. So that's that's the way it works. But um, thank you everybody for coming by and visiting the channel. Um, we do I this. Like I like headbutts. <laughs> we do this Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, but we're not doing it this Friday. Uh, this okay. Friday begins my wife's birthday weekend, and I'm going to go down to Daytona and spend some time with her. So uh, I will not be live streaming this Friday. I may end up doing it a different day. Just I just haven't decided or figured out when. Um, so 
we will definitely be back on Monday at our normal time at 7.30 Eastern time. Uh, we will be drawing. We will be talking comics. We will be doing all the things you guys are used to us doing, and uh, hopefully I won't be acting too much of an idiot, but you never know. It always happens. And Lorenzo, Bethany, I thank you guys so much for coming by and saying hi. And oh, wait a minute. Thanks, oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah, I do remember that cat. Ah, yeah, right. yeah, it was a, like it was a popular cat. Doesn't doesn't Trump's family have a bunny rabbit or something? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I think so. That. Yeah. But, all right. So all right. I thought you made that up. No, I think they really do. I know Tim Lynn has has it because he called you know has a book you know. Oh, Evan Von Scriver says I require more streaming. I have a question, Uh, um, Lorenzo. When are you streaming next on your channel? I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, I I might uh, stream tomorrow. Um, because I streamed last uh, last week on Thursday and Friday. So you have claws. I don't have claws, or do I? Yeah, I don't know. Do snakes have claws? How often? Yeah, do reptiles have claws? I mean, I don't think. I don't know. I don't have food at my house. It's a mystery. <laughs> All right. Well, if you do, if you do, if you do, if you do live stream tomorrow, send out a link. I'll definitely join because I should be home. Yeah, you're a member of the of the of the group. Do you ever see any of the messages? I never. Yes. I don't. I don't get. I don't get the notifications for for Twitter. So I don't have it on my phone or anything. So it, it, oh not, yeah, you remember the Slee Stackians. Oh okay. Well then, I will definitely check it out tomorrow. Bethany, you got anything going on? Anything special you're doing? Nope. Ouch. <laughs> Except fighting with cats. We should have a whole channel just nothing of putting up with these stupid cats in our lives. Yeah, especially since this one isn't mine. Oh, there you go. Hey, well, yeah, none of the cats in my house are mine. I have the dog, and that's it. And yeah. he's currently curled up on his pillow underneath my desk like he's supposed to be. So he's the good one. All right, everybody, thanks for checking out the show. Come back uh, Monday. We'll see you here on Monday, and uh, thanks again. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you, everybody.